بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دس از رستم اینڈ ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ریکارڈ اے فریش لیکچر آن دا ٹاپک 17th سینچری انگلش لٹریچر دس از بینگ ریکارڈڈ فار اسٹوڈنٹس ہو ار اسٹڈینگ ہسٹری اف انگلش لٹریچر ایٹ آسٹ اینڈ ازارا یونیورسٹی ایفٹر بار سو Uh, these uh, these uh, these two universities offer this course in first semester of bs english other students can also uh, listen to this lecture and they can also profit by its content now 17th century uh, is uh, further divided into two uh, uh, strata uh, two sub uh, categories that is pre restoration period and post restoration period so i'll just quickly talk about these things because uh we uh, i'll be recording more lectures and i'll be explaining these things but here i just want to give an overview to bs english first semester students some of these topics will be uh, given to students as presentation topics that's why i won't go into detail so pre restoration uh, what is restoration i'll explain in the next slide but uh Uh, this period uh, is also known as age of milton because milton was a very prominent figure during this period and this period is from 1600 to 1660 ad and post restoration period is also known as age of dryden because in this era in this period of time as you can see here from 1660 onward up till 1700 it, these are round about dates Dryden uh, was the uh, poet and uh, prose writer who ha- who was the main figure in this period so uh, uh, students of bs english first semester they can uh, now fix the- these two uh, periods in their memory and they can uh, remember the names pre restoration and post restoration age of milton age of dryden and roughly uh, uh, i have given uh, the dates rough dates 1600 to 6060 around about 60 years and then 40 years now pre restoration restoration period is further divided into two eras uh, these are political eras i mean james first was ruling england uh, from 1603 to 1625 so in uh, with reference to james first this uh, period that is around about 24 years or 23 years this is known as Uh, jacobian period okay uh, jacobian period and uh, charles first ruled england from 1625 to 1649 so as per his name this period is known as caroline period so uh, you can say that uh, these 60 years have further been divided into two categories uh, two uh, sub uh, time periods and uh, Charles II that is here it is Charles I and son of Charles I is Charles II he ruled uh, in uh, he ruled England from 1658 he was restored he was in France and so he, uh, he was invited back and he he became a uh, monarch or uh, king of England in 1658 so from this onward or you can say from 1660 onward till 1700 is known as uh, post restoration period this was you can say a political uh, uh, timeline because uh, although two literary figures that is two poets have also been mentioned but this is you no know, political history of england so now what is restoration again it is a bit political but i have to uh, quickly tell it because uh, unless we have this on the back of our mind uh, we won't have a lot of uh, you know details like In England there was civil war uh, from 1642 up to 1649 and what wh- what was the war who were the contestants like on the one side we have Charles I and on the other hand we has Cromwell who was representing freedom fighters a kind of freedom fighters so Charles I uh, uh, you know believed in divine right of kings there is a theory divine uh, right of kings and uh, Charles Cromwell uh, said that uh, commonwealth should be established in England and parliament is supreme so uh, there were two groups one were supporters of Charles I okay and other were supporters of Cromwell Charles I uh, supporters they were known as royalists or uh, cavalier or they were all uh, they were catholics even Charles I himself was a catholic he believed in catholicism 
and Cromwell uh, definitely he was a Protestant. So these were the supporters of Cromwell and they were called Roundheads or Puritans and they were Protestant by faith. So this was the war and uh, ultimately I won't go into detail because uh, this is not our main topic but ultimately uh, Charles Fuzz had to resign uh, in 1647. It means there was, you know, uh, there was civil war which started in 1642. So the whole of English community or society, they were divided into two groups. Uh, some were supporting Charles I and some were supporting Cromwell or Parliament or Commonwealth, etc. Any of these forces, uh, even Milton was on the side of Cromwell, age of Milton. So they uh, triumphed and they succeeded and Charles I had to, you know, uh, gave up crown and uh, he resigned and after two years he was beheaded okay beheading of Charles was in in 1649 so that's why uh, this is called uh, you know now second period that is 1658 after this 16 uh, uh, once uh, he had been beheaded then Cromwell start uh, started ruling and uh, parliamentarian forces they came up and they were, you know, protest, uh, Puritan, they introduced uh, Puritanism, there was ban on drama, uh, everything. I will go into details soon uh, in another lecture. So, after, uh, there is a long, uh, you know, a struggle in England, but in 1658, uh, uh, Charles, uh, uh, Charles' son, the son of Charles I, he was living in exile in France, so he was invited back and he became ruler of England. So when he was restored to the throne of England, so this is called restoration. In in previous slide I mentioned as you can see here post restoration period. So when Charles II came back, Charles II means son of Charles I. So this is known as restoration period. So literature created in this period is known as restoration period or uh, post restoration literature and uh, the literature created pre uh, uh, prior to this is known as pre-restoration period so this was a little bit history of england now pre-restoration english literature so it, there are three segments one is drama second is poetry and third one is prose but in in today's video uh, lecture i will just talk about drama okay pre-restoration literature but I'll just focus on drama and then in the next lecture I, I will talk about uh, prose and then poetry so let's move on uh, here uh, there are two, ty uh, two types of school re related to uh, pre-restoration drama old school and uh, steric group the the, the dramatists who were uh, you know who were exercising staya as a uh, you know technique so in in this school we have Decker, Haywood, Webster, Beaumont and Fletcher uh, I won't uh, like to overburden uh, BS English first semester student with uh, the works of all these uh, you know uh, pre-restoration dramatists, playwrights, English playwrights but uh, I'll talk about this group and even from this group I won't talk about all these like Chapman, uh, Morrison, Milton Tonio and Ben Johnson. So I have highlighted Ben Johnson because I'll just talk about Ben Johnson because uh, there, there, there is a lot of detail so it will be difficult for uh, students to remember these names and then the works of all these uh, playwrights. So just uh, I'm going to discuss few features of uh, pre-restoration drama which were which can be found uh, uh, could be found out uh, could be find uh, in this uh, you know uh, in the works of these uh, 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 dramatists the features the characteristics which i am going to mention they were almost available and uh, reader can find them in the works of all these uh, uh, dramatists now what were the features like uh, uh, Pre-restoration uh, pre drama means 17th century drama. So prior to 17th century, we have 16th century drama. That is dr romantic drama. So uh, romantic drama uh, uh, had these features. So in contrast with dr uh, romantic drama, this is new drama. Okay, drama of pre-restoration area. Like pre uh, romantic drama was written uh, for all uh, segments of society, like nobles, 
queens, groundlings, courtiers, everybody enjoyed that drama. But this drama, it was written only for aristocracy, that is high class, high gentry, okay, or people who had uh, uh, royal attachments, etc. So, uh, people of romantic drama like uh, University Wears, uh, you know, Shakespeare, uh, uh, everybody, so they, uh, they were not good in plot construction. They believed in dialogues of characters, okay. Uh, dialogues were written and characters were created in such a way that uh, drama was inducted. But here, what was happening? Invention of plots was there. So, uh, breach of classical unities in previous drama like Shakespeare, uh, there were unity of time, uh, you know, and uh, then we have unity of place, action, etc. So, here, uh, observ observance of classical unities, particularly by, uh, by Ben Johnson. Then we have no classical uh, decorum, uh, that is mingling of genres was there in Shakespearean works, comedy and tragedy, they were mingled. Here, separation of comedy and tragedy. It was romantic spirit and they, uh, here it was real, realistic spirit. And, uh, but uh, another important point is that these dramatists were poor at characterization. There were moral laxity in characters, like themes of immoral love were there in their dramas, okay. So, before I talk about uh, uh, comedies of Ben Johnson, uh, let me talk about uh, this uh, humor. So, these uh, uh, comedies are uh, known as comedy of humor. So, what is humor? Uh, there is a theory, uh, theory of uh, humors. It, uh, it was uh, popularized in uh, by Galen. So, uh, there are four elements, uh, fire, air, earth, water. And correspondingly, we have hot, cold, dry, and moisture, as you can see here. So, uh, it was thought out that complexion and temperament of a person depend on the imbalance or predominance of these human. Like uh, choleric, yellow bile from liver. So, this was in the medicine. They're passionate and ambitious. People who were choleric, uh, if they, this uh, humor, this bile uh, was dominant in them, so they were passionate and ambitious. If uh, uh, black bile from kidneys, that is melancholic, so these people were reserved and anxious and unhappy. And sanguine uh, were the people uh, who were uh, under the influence of red bile from heart, that is, they were optimistic and joyful, and phlegmatic were the people who were calm and thoughtful, that is, they were under the influence of this humor, uh, white bile. Humor uh, means li uh, liquid, you can say fluid, okay, some fluid, uh, humor means fluid. So, these were, uh, this was the theory going on. So, under this theory, uh, Ben Johnson wrote uh, his comedies. But he gave a little different touch. Like he said that permanent and predominant peculiarity of disposition in a character such as greed, jealousy, cowardliness, deception. For some reason, I that Johnson was that the way you in the mazaj mein, जो जो आपका ज्यादा जो ह्यूमर है जैसे वो छाया हुआ है वो आप आपके मजाज में जैसे आप लालची एक बंदा है एक किसी के अंदर जेलसी बहुत ज्यादा है तो ये उसका मौजू था इसको कहते हैं कॉमेडी ऑफ ह्यूमर ओके परमानेंट एंड प्रीडोमिनेंट पीकुलैरिटी ऑफ डिस्पोजिशन ओके इन अ कैरेक्टर सच एज ग्रीड जेलसी कॉर्डिनेस डिसेप्शन दीस आर द नेम ऑफ कॉमेडीज ऑफ बेन जॉनसन ओके Walpoon, uh, it, it was a style on cupidity and uh, depravity of characters, people who love uh, very much and who have, you know, faith in uh, human uh, beauty, etc. Uh, Alchemist was, uh, uh, it, it dealt with greed, this was the dominant humor. And Bartholomew Fear, hypocritical puritanism, silent woman, people afraid of noise, staple of news, irresponsible news mongering, etc. And there were two other uh, comedies, every man in his humor, every man out of his humor. Next, inshallah, uh, I'll cover pre-restoration prose, in which I'll cover pamphlets, essays, character writers, and authorized version of the Bible. So, uh, I quickly covered all this because I just wanted to uh, do away with it within 15 minutes. And uh, inshallah, I'll, I'll talk about all these things in detail in my lectures and some of these uh, topics will be given to students as home assignments, okay, and uh, they will either do an assignment or they will record a presentation on it. So, uh, 
with this i end and please uh, stay tuned for the next lecture which is pre-registration pros thanks